For hands of gold are always cold, but a woman's hands are warm. What's up, Game of Throners? It's your boy DJ11 here, back at you with another one. And what's up? The wait is over. Winter is here. It is finally here. The wait is done. I can't believe it. We finally got to see it. Episode 1, Season 7, and it did not disappoint. Oh my god. I can't even be mad. It's like, yep, we're only going to get seven episodes this season and only six next year. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to bitch about it. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy every single one of them for what it's worth. Oh my god, it was lit. I mean, there wasn't even that much act action and I didn't sit down for like the first 45 minutes of this episode. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I was too hyped. Oh my god. Let's get into it. Well, for the fourth time ever, we got a pre-credit opening scene, and it was pretty tight. Now I've heard it asked, when did you know that wasn't Walder Frey? Well, immediately. Walder is already dead. Now I was hoping it was going to be Nymeria and her super pack that got in and did that to the phrase, but this was wholly satisfying. The North remembers. I loved it. Arya was so perfectly ruthless. When you tell others of this story, tell them that the North remembers, and winter came all over the phrase. The North remembers. Some say she's now a complete psychopath, but I say she's just no longer afraid of anything. Didn't you just love that smirk on Arya's face when she was walking out? I know I did. Now this episode is starting out the right way as far as my predictions go. I've always said that I thought it was the Whites that bring the cold and not the other way around. This scene with the White Army seems to back that up. And how sick was it seeing those zombie giants? I mean, come on. Now I've heard some talk that people think some of these giants or one of these giants might be 1-1, one -one, and I just don't know how that could be. These giants are coming from the north, and 1-1 one -one died in the south at Winterfell, so no, I don't believe any of these giants are 1-1. One -one. They're just old giants from the past that have died in the north. And there's another small prediction ringing true. There will be giant whites. Still haven't seen an ice spider, but holding on to hope. Why does Mira only talk about her father being Helen Reed, and no mention of her mother? Hmm. Mira looks so relieved not to have to pull that sled anymore. She has had enough. And just for a second, when the gate in the wall started to close, weren't you just a little afraid Ed was going to get trapped on the wrong side when he was just staring out into the north? I know I was. Down to Winterfell and the new king in the north. Here we get another question answered. How will John and Sansa get along? We have friction right out of the gate. They both had great points, but John is the king, and you never argue with a king in front of his minions. Sansa went about that all wrong, but hey, what else is new? I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know. I don't know anything. Another question gets answered in this scene. What castle will Tormund and the Wildlings get? It looks like it's going to be the same as it is in the books. They will man the castles along the wall, starting over at Eastwatch. According to the Hound's vision in the flames, that's where the Whites will be trying to make their way through. Looks like we're the Night's Witch now. In this next scene, the friction continues. How should I be smarter? By listening to you? That was cold, John. But not as cold as being called Joffrey. Don't you ever talk that way to me. Nah! This could get ugly, and Sansa actually sounds like she's finally learning a thing or two. Cersei also taught her about a woman's greatest weapon. Tears aren't a woman's only weapon. The best ones between your legs. Learn how to use it. Drink. Do you really think Sansa would stoop to using that weapon against Jon or Littlefinger? I don't know if she's got it in her. Do you? Down to King's Landing, and the new map is looking nice. Enemies all around, and Cersei wants to build a dynasty. <laughs> oh yeah, like I said before, Danny's not the Mad Queen. Cersei is. Speaking of mad, enter Euron Greyjoy and the Iron Fleet. Boy, for not having any trees on the Iron Islands, they sure whipped up a thousand boats in no time. I have to admit, I like this scene. I know not everyone will, but I thought it was a good start for Euron's redemption arc. Much better than the King's Moot speech. The way he kept reflecting Jamie's mocking tone, it worked for me. There I am, with a thousand ships and two good hands. Ooh. <laughs> Euron says he's going to bring Cersei a gift. Now I've heard some say it will be Tyrion, but I think it'll be Ilaria Sand. And Cersei's going to give her to the Mountain or Kyburn to get absolutely medieval on. I'm going to get medieval on your ass. Okay, I just can't with the Sam at the Citadel scenes. My buddy said I should make a remix of it, but I I just can't with these scenes. 
Well, it looks like we were all wrong. The guy from Harry Potter wasn't Marwan the Mage. Seems like kind of a waste. He's just the Archmaester. It definitely looks as though he's ready to keep his head buried in the sand. He wants nothing to do with what Sam knows about the Whites up north. Back up to Winterfell, and it's training time for Brienne and Pod. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Pod is going to kill somebody major in this story. They're not spending all this time showing him being trained and talking about his training in the books for nothing. Podrick's going to end up taking out a main character. You heard it here first. You're a lucky man. No need to seize the last word, Lord Baelish. I'll assume it was something clever. He wants something. I know exactly what he wants. Ooh, Sansa, getting all grown up. When Arya comes upon the Lannister soldiers, she thinks she's going to have to kill them, but instead she finds they're just regular guys thrown into a shit situation. What's up, Ed Shireen? Singing Hands of Gold? Cool. And it looks like I got a third prediction right. Just about everybody when I asked said Arya would be heading back north to Winterfell after killing Walder Frey. I stood strong and alone, saying nay. Arya will head back to King's Landing to finish her kill list. Boom. Mark another one in the correct column for the kid. Bald cunt. The Hound is not a rum boy. It's too sweet and he's not about anything sweet. They came across the little house where he and Arya stayed and he feels major remorse for robbing the man and his daughter from what little they had. Some think this went on a little too long, but I loved it with the homage to the gravedigger scene. Just my luck, I end up with a bunch of fire worshippers. The Hound is slowly but surely becoming a believer. Why does Dondarrion look so shocked when the Hound can see into the flames? And yes, for those of you that followed my prediction videos last year, looks like we called another Another one, right? The Hound will hook up with the Brotherhood without banners and head north to the Wall. Yeah, I also said it would be Thoros to resurrect Jon, but hey, I get a feeling he still will. It just won't be Jon's first time coming back. What is the deal with Sam and Gilly in this show? In the book, Sam the Slayer is one of my favorite characters. In the show, they just don't seem to know what to do with him. Walking through the snow, puking on a boat, rolling through Horn Hill naming trees, or reading a stolen book to find out what Stannis already told him? What the hell, D&D? You already killed the Stannis character. Can you please quit trying to ruin Sam? We end at the Citadel with Jorah and his grayscale arm, and it is starting to look gnarly. Again, kind of a throwaway scene just to let us know where Jorah is and what he's up to, but ooh, that arm is looking gross. Finally, finally, finally. Danny makes it home. She finally steps foot back on Westerosi soil. Here I called another one right. So many were wondering where Danny would land when she came back to Westeros. I always knew it would be Dragonstone. She takes it all in, then straight to business. Shall we begin? For hands of gold are always cold, but a woman's hands are... So there it is. The long wait is over. I can't believe it's finally here. I mean, all in all, what a great episode. Um, I probably would have loved anything. It's been so long. It's like just a, yeah, it's a starving man getting a Ritz cracker. I mean, it was everything I wanted. It uh, made a bunch of predictions that I made. I see that it's going the right way. Um, it answered a bunch of questions to what everybody thought and uh, how things were going to work out. And I mean, with the Sansa and John thing and where's Arya going, you know, back to Winterfell or down to King's Landing and is uh, all sorts of stuff. I mean, are there ice giants or white giants? I mean... This is going to be an amazing season. I'm pumped. I can't wait. I can't believe I made it the whole year spoiler free. So everything I'm seeing is totally exciting, totally fresh, totally new. And uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I am pumped for this season. So thanks again for being here. It's your boy DJ11. And uh, yeah, you know they're going to be coming all year long. So, uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you liked it, make sure you smash that thumbs up. And until next time, game on.